13th chapter, the 11th verse, down to the 19th verse. Luke, the 17th chapter, 11th verse, to the 19th verse. Luke, 17th chapter, 11th verse, to the 19th verse. Amen. 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 And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there came him ten men that were lepers, who stood afar off. And when he saw them, he said, I am a leper. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, but they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, saying, were there not ten claims, but where are the nine? There are not now that have returned to give glory to God, save this stranger. Verse 19. And he said unto them, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you. I most of all, Father, I thank you for giving us the only begotten Son. 
dead and alive. But I got adopted to the mama's life. We might be reconciled by you. And I thank you.
without you, what can we do? Now that the words of the Son of God. Holy God, we bless thee. We humble ourselves before thee. We come confessing our sins and our shortcomings. If there's anything in us that calls you to frown, blot it out of your book. Forgive us, oh God. Create within us who we are. And renew within us my spirit. Well, we don't want our worshiping. We don't want our running to be in vain. Hide us down the shadow of yonder's cross. Oh God, so that we can hear. Thank you for receptive hearts and listening ears. Holy Spirit, just do what you do in us that we'll be so careful in your grace. It's in the name of him who is our Christ. And so we come in kingdom and all the children of God said together, Amen. Amen. St. Luke, the 17th chapter, it has already been read in your hearing, and those who are in the audience, and those who are joining us by social media, uh, we certainly uh, appreciate uh, your presence and your comments, and certainly we wish you a blessed and happy Thanksgiving. Amen. St. Luke, the 17th chapter, and I just want to lift uh, verse 15 and 16 and 17. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Let me go further. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And finally, verse 19, And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to use as a thought this morning the reward of a grateful heart. The reward of a grateful heart. Thank you, Lord. To be grateful is to be appreciative, to have a, a thankful heart, to have an appreciative heart, a, a heart that loved the Lord, and a heart that appreciate from which you have come. Because too often people take God's blessings for granted. Too often when we are not grateful, we miss out on some opportunities that life will have for us. And we often tell our children that your altitude is determined by your attitude. How high you go in life determines your attitude. And one Poet, a writer said about ungratefulness, and it was Shakespeare. And I hate to, to, to uh, quote him, but it always conjures up in my mind about a child that's ungrateful. He says, How sharper than a serpent's tooth it is yeah. yes. to have a thankless child. Yeah. A child that's ungrateful is like a snake bite. Yes. A child, and mothers can tell you that the one that you provided room and board for nine months, 
And then you go to the, to the very point of death to bring that child into the world. And that child, ungrateful, thankless, feel that they are entitled, thankless. And there's a sin of ingratitude. To be thankful. That's why each morning I wake up, I have to tell him thank you. I don't have to have uh, anything miraculous. Anything sensational just to be able to breathe. And to go out and have meditation in the morning. Just me and the Lord. Don't let me see the sun. Coming through the tree. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I see a miracle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I see the tree. Let's thank you for the tree. Yes, Look at you all day. Yes, yes, and then a bird fly by. Yes, singing in the tree. Yes, I said, thank you. I can hear it. Yes, new verses. Every morning. Yes, every morning, yes, every morning yes, new verses. I could have been cut off. Yes, but then that wouldn't be a bad idea because I'll meet with Jesus. Right. New verses every morning. Thank you. Thank you for the small things in life. And to understand that what happens between your sunrise and your sunset is so important in life. And we look at this narrative, we look at this story, and we see Men who've been cut off yes. outside of the city, yes. cut off. Yes. But then there is someone is in the text in verse 11. He is on the board between Galilee and Samaria. Yes. Verse 11. Yes. And he was passing through. He's on his way to Jerusalem. But he was in the midst. He was midway between Samaria and Galilee. Yes. That tells me that Jesus in, in, he's in, in the halfway point between your despair and your deliverance. Yes. Between your leprosy yes. and being made whole. Yes. That's where he is. Right. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, yes. he is and he can be in the midst if you cry out to him like like they did. Here are these, these ten men. But Jesus was passing by. Yes. And then as he entered the village, verse 12, there met him these ten men who were lepers. Men whose flesh was decaying. Teeth falling out. Hair. Flesh rot, Smacking. They were a community of misery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Community of incarceration. A community that had to camp outside of the city. Yeah. Expelled from life. Right. Expelled from home. Mm -hmm. From children and relationship. Couldn't go to the church. Yeah. Couldn't go to the temple. Yeah. And as a result, they had to camp outside. But I'm so glad. Yeah. That there was one who was in between Samaria and Galilee, yeah. in between your their misery, their devastation, yeah. Yeah. between their isolation. That's what sin does. Yeah. But he here is Jesus is that you can be made whole. Yeah. And that's what misery, you know, misery loves company. Yeah. And so they were ten men, ten men who gathered together, and that condition made them hoarse. They couldn't, uh, they, they couldn't individually make a sound that was audible. But together, they figured that they were stronger together. We're stronger together, rather than individually. And as a result, they cried out, "Master!" Master have rest on us. They didn't say what they wanted. They didn't say cleanse us. They said just have mercy. In other words, do what you want to do. If you have mercy on us, you can bring.
bring us through. The old deacon used to say, mercy wrecked your throne. Y'all remember that? of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. Then when he's in that verse 14, uh, he said, uh, when he saw them, yes. Jesus sees your situation. Yes. Yes. Because of where you are, he sees your situation and he cares. Yes. He cares. He cares uh, for you. He cares for us. And my sisters and brothers, but look what they did. They recognized that this, these are the perspectives. Uh, they recognized, number one, the place of worship. Not only did they recognize the place of worship, but they recognized the posture of worship. The place of worship, the posture of worship, and the person of worship, to whom worship was designed for, that is to Jesus Christ, our Lord. At his feet, they fell on his feet. The posture. It's in your heart. Right. That's the posture that he wants. Now you can fall on your face and roll over and you can do the flips and you can get on your knees. But if your heart isn't right, if your heart is not right before God, it doesn't matter where should I get on my knees or should I, I, or should I get in bed and then Sam or should I be sitting in my chair or whatever. It doesn't matter where you sit, where you kneel. That's why we can't judge each other's actions and behavior and what we do because he looks at the heart. That's when he knows when your worship is for real, when you're thankful, when it's for real. And then that's when he will reward you. He will reward you. So we wish you happy Thanksgiving. I was running an errand for my wife as uh, she's finding more to do now, seeing the dog. <laughs> and so I had, um, she said, go to the area to get some pecans. And uh, the message of the book. I hadn't done what it was supposed to have done. And so this fellow is outside of Cleveland on Highway 8, and he wished me happy Thanksgiving. And then he asked me, a white appearing fellow with a pony long ponytail. I didn't make much of it, had strong features. He said to me, he says, uh, do you know why you all celebrate Thanksgiving? And I said, because I'm thankful. He says, if it wasn't for us, them three folks that came over from England would not have survived and you all wouldn't be celebrating a Thanksgiving today. He was an Indian chicken. He was an Indian. And he said, they don't want to tell you the truth about how they got saved. Because we saved them. If we had not saved them three boats, Mayflower and the other, yeah, those, the three. He said, you all wouldn't be celebrating, but they don't, want, they don't want you to know the truth. I said, that's still the case. Because the truth means that that that's that responsibility and there's accountability. That's what's happened in Florida. They don't want that that, that books that are being banned because that means accountability. That means I got to face myself. And so he it was kind of we parted and kind of said, I said, you know the reason why they don't want the the, the, the history the void of our contribution because that means responsibility and accountability and people don't want to see themselves. Don't want to see the atrocities that you've been committing. But still, we have to be thankful. Yeah. All right, bud. I'm going to let you have these first. <laughs> often, we, the point is, is that often the things that we have, we thank him for the gift without being appreciative of the gift. Right. And, and so that's why uh, the, this one, when he saw being obedient of faith, what he saw, 
that he was healed. Yeah. Right. He healed 10. Yeah. But when he saw that he was healed, he came went back. Yeah. Yeah. He went back right there immediately and said, thank you. Yeah. Fell at his feet right. at the place of worship, yeah. the posture of worship, yeah. and the person to be worshipped. Right. And then he received his reward, yeah. which was a pardon. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was healed, but not made whole. All were healed, but they all weren't made whole. Only one was made whole. And to receive the pardon. That's the message today. You can receive the pardon. Go back and tell us, thank you for all that that you've done. Now, some of us like to cut a little slack just in our nature for the other nine. The nine had that mental religion. They meant to go back. I've been there meant to go back. But they got sacked. They got so happy after they seen the priest who left the temple. Then they went. They, they, they stopped seeing their neighbors and, and, and they forgot and they missed an opportunity to go back and say thank you. I'm sure they were appreciative. But then there is a this contrast in life uh, between the other side of success. When you become successful on your way, between your sunrise and your sunset, between your interest and your exit, between your beginning of life and the end of life, what do you do in the middle when you arrive at your accomplishments and your goals in life? When you arrive, what do you become? What have you become? Too often we see many of our people in position got there. We put them there. And they get there, forget from which they came. How shame is more damnable of people when you know my story. And then you act like you've been there all the time. What have you become on your way to deliverance? When you have arrived, that's the question. What have we become when we become successful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we were in the outhouse, had outhouses. Yeah. But now we got all these houses. Yeah. They won't say thank you. Yeah. What have you become? It, it's the other side of blessing. Can you stand to be blessed? Can you stand to be blessed? Can you stand to have goals and life accomplished? Even when you've been healed, when you receive your breakthrough, yeah, yeah. when we have to boost you off yeah, yeah. in your pinto, yeah. <laughs> and now you can drive a Mercedes. Yeah. Will you speak to me then? <laughs> How do we handle victory after the conflict? That's what happened here. There's a contrast. Blessing. Whenever God blesses us, yeah. there are always streams attached. Always streams attached. Keep your affection on the giver and not just always the gift. Because I'm going to tell you, only what you do for Christ. That's all that's going to last. I've told you before, we we stand holding hands for a one who lives uh, is on the brink of eternity yeah. to breathe their last breath. Nobody says, bring me my trophies. Yeah. Bring me my accolades. Bring me all the plaques on my wall. Yeah. Don't bring me my will. Yeah. Don't bring me stuff. Don't bring the things. But bring the family. Surround me as I make this transition because I'm on the verge of eternity. I want my family around. I want love around me. Right. That's the only thing that will take you through. Yeah. Only what you do for Christ. That's the only last. Yeah. And so when he, Jesus is asked the question to us today in verse 17, as I prepare to leave, and Jesus answered and said, were there not ten others? But where are the nine? Are you part of the nine? Or are you part of that ten percent? 
Now, you probably had more. What do you think? That's the question. How appreciative am I for all that he's done for me? How appreciative. Adam messed us all up. Adam messed us all up. And as a result, all of us have leprosy of sin. Because that's what he did. But I'm so glad yes. as I cut across the field yes. that Jesus came along. Yes. Because we were lonely uh -huh. and uh, separated from our families. Yes. Sin will do that for us. Separated yes. from loved ones and laughter and careers separate us on the outside of the city. Yes. That's what sin is lasting and is limitless. Yes. What will it do with it creates distance between us and our fellow man. But I'm so glad that there is a man on the board. Oh, he's on the board. And all we have to do is just cry out. The issue becomes what stage of decay are we in? What, what stage are we in? Paul says that we have just a step. That when this ugly house right. of this tabernacle is dissolved, right. we're dissolving. Right. All of us are yes. dissolving. Right. It all depends upon what stage of decay are we in. It's like we're walking dead men on our way. Right. Some are closer to the exit than we are to the entrance. But right. so what? Right. To be absent from this body yeah. is to be present with the Lord. Yeah. What stage of decay are we in? Yeah. But I thank God. Yeah. I'm, I'm like this Samaritan. Right. The one that didn't expect to say thank you. Yeah. The child that you didn't expect to take the mama and the dad in. But it was the other one who would get the benefit. Yeah. But that child had to take them in. Many times, it's the one that you least expect will be the one that will have to pick you up. <laughs> that, that one that was least expected, that, that one that was the black sheep of the family, that become the corner, the corner of the stone. That one, that, that's the one who came back and said thank you. That, that, that you the one who said you wouldn't do nothing. You wouldn't be any good. You're just lost. That's a child that I lost. That's the child yes, that will come back. Yes, because the others wouldn't even bring you a, a glass of water. Yes, too busy. Yes, too busy. Yes, too busy. Yes, but it's that child. Yes, the stone that the building rejected yes, will become the head of the corner. Yes, Don't be weary in well doing. Yes, Close it off. Don't, don't you be weary. It's well done. But in due season, you're going to leave. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for my reward. In due season. That's why I'm going back. I'm going back to tell him thank you for all that you've done for me. I'm going to tell him thank you. Because you died. Thank you. Not only that, but you were moved it. Thank you for my transgression. Thank you. But by your strike. Thank you. That's how I got healed. He paid the price. Did he do it for you? Is he all right? He paid the sin debt for me and for you. Thank you.
give him time and he'll show up and he'll never miss it. What an awesome God we serve. The door is open.
Sister Bessie Johnson, Sister Hattie Johnson, Sister Barbara McCoy, Sister Rosie Lloyd, Sister Amanda Wheeler, Sister Addie B. Ripley, Dallas, Texas, Sister Evangeline Young, Lake Village, Arkansas. And of course, a special prayer is asked for Brother Jim Finley's family, whose brother is, I understand, going through. I would like to personally ask for your prayers as I have a cousin at this particular moment who has left Sunflower County for St. Louis, Missouri to receive a liver transplant. Amen. Blessings upon everyone who is going through at this time. Let us remember them in our prayers. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Lee, who's not here. These ladies are with me every step of the way from 15 minutes to 5 in the morning until the last plate left outside the door. So for that, I say thank you, thank you, thank you. Brothers and sisters who helped us so much in Sacred Space, uh, which is an arm basically of, of our church, and you'll see probably in the paper, uh, we had Christian uh, women united, that's yes. black and white, uh, ladies who came together in Sacred Space on Friday, and uh, it was a, a great uh, event, and I certainly appreciate the members of our church who participated in that, and uh, our Brother Smith, and uh, we had a couple of brothers Joseph uh, Frazier yes. uh, and uh, Pamelo and I think someone else who helped us and uh, you know for, uh, we thank Brother Smith and Brother uh, Jenny uh, and others who have been working with us so diligently you know with sacred space as we feed the least of lost and the left out as we prepare uh, shelter and uh, transition home for them. Thank you. What an awesome job of this church is doing. How appreciative what a privilege it is to be the pastor of such a great fellowship. Amen. 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 Can I piggyback a little bit on, on that sacred space? Piggyback. Okay. Piggyback on what you're saying. That okay, go ahead. We're the same as Paul at Thanksgiving. Can y'all hear them? I okay. Want to thank, yeah, I, they can hear me. I want, to, I want to thank the members who come out and serve on Tuesday night. Yes. We normally feed about 200 meals every Tuesday night from 5 30 to 7 30. But if anyone was there, he said, uh, he stayed on this last Tuesday, last Tuesday, and it's so much work. We got 18 guys living yeah. there now in our transition home who have come off the street, who have been through the, the rehab program, mm -hmm. who have driving license. Got, we got them a driving license, and they all have jobs right now. After we had their jobs, they would come back there and they would transition back into society, and it's just a revolving door that we that we are uh, we doing it at the sacred space. Also, we open up our shelter. It's not a homeless shelter, there's a shelter from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So no one can uh no one will be sleeping in the streets in the city of Greenville. No. Anybody sleeping in the street, they can come stay at the sacred space in a warm bed and get a get a hot meal. So we try to take people off the street from sleeping in the street. Also, I want to thank my wife who worked so diligently in doing it for our community service with the local banks. Uh, local churches and community, there's so much work and so on. Every Tuesday night, if you if you got a heart to serve, just come over. It's just fellowship. If nothing else, just a fellowship with the with the people, and it'd be a great service. And I want to thank you again for those members who come out on Tuesday night to serve each and every Tuesday, especially for the We have a master chef right here oh right there. One more time, he's on the ball. Amen. Amen. We want to continue to thank him. Amen. And I didn't mean to clean those pots when y'all were in the pots. I didn't mean to y'all come out and clean the pots. And I didn't mean to clean everybody else. I, I just want to say, uh, Sister, uh, Sister Smith is basically the director of the kitchen. And so we, uh, the culinary directors, and so we have to go through her because they're doing a magnificent job. But we got so much canned food from, uh, from everywhere. What is that? The place that we got? All that food that we can and canned goods. Greenville uh, no. Public, Public School. Yes. The kids brought a lot of canned goods, as well as uh, the train the, the lady from Milesville. Okay. Uh, I've got to recognize. Um, we have uh, our visitors who are not visitors to me as family, really family. Uh, we will cross the field from each other. Um, I was just talking about uh, about George and his family who went on to be with Lord George Long. Uh, and uh, we just were reminiscing just uh, just last week. And here they're showing up today. And I had no Ron, Ron, Ron Laws, uh, Jackie Laws, and uh, Dr. Lewis Baldwin. Uh, Dr. Baldwin. I know you're retired. Right, for 30 years. And he has written uh, extensively on Dr. Martin Luther King. He has a book that was written. 
and uh, have that vote, and we just appreciate them coming and sharing with us. And uh, that's Thelma's dog in the middle. Amen. Amen. That's Thelma's dog in the middle, but just like your mom. Just like your mom. Amen. And we just uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, you want to Paul, and you all want to have a word or something that so you can give, and then we just appreciate it. I didn't recognize you when uh, you mashed all up, and I said you'd have you up here with me. Yeah, I want to thank you for that powerful message. Amen. That's such a great message. We all need to hear that. Bless you. I want you to know that uh, I share your faith, your vision, and your sense of mission. Yes. I also like to say to you, Pastor, and my other brothers of the Omega Sci Fi Society, happy Omega Week. Thank you. 